In this video, we're going to start taking a look at applying materials to our object. Materials are a great way to get a starting texture going for your object or even just to get a feel of how the object is going to look in game before you start texturing it. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is select the object and as you recall in a previous video, if I were to apply a material just by selecting the object, it would apply it to the entire object and that's no good because this weapon is going to be different material types. You're going to have the blade is going to be kind of a metal. The hilt, I'm guessing, is probably I'm going to make that metal. And then let's say the handle part was not a metal. Let's say it was a wood and it wasn't very reflective or shiny at all. So we definitely don't want the entire weapon to be the same material. So we're going to go ahead and open up our hypershade and let's create a few materials before we even get started applying them. Well, Right off the start, I know I need one, two, and three different materials. I'm going to have a material for my blade. I'm going to have one for my hilt. And I'm going to have one for the handle, which is not going to be reflective. So I already know that's three right there. And probably a fourth one because I want our twines to have sort of a rope texture to them. So probably four different materials. We'll go ahead. That's a good way to get started is first identify how many different materials your object is going to need before you create them. So let's go ahead and create those materials. What we're going to do is go up to Window, and we're going to go to Rendering Editors, and we're going to open up the Hypershade Editor. Hypershade is going to show us everything that we need to have in here for creating materials. And let's just go over one thing real fast. The Lambert one is the base material. It's what you're actually looking at right now with no shaded material being applied. When you create an object, a Lambert one is automatically applied to it. It is the default material for all objects. So you never want to make any adjustments to that. I highly recommend you never touch the Lambert one material. Always leave it alone. <laughs> so let's take a look at the main three materials real fast just to show you which ones are the ones you'll use more than any other materials within Maya. A blin starting off would be like a metal. It's sort of like a steel or a iron. Any kind of metal object would probably use a blin because it's going to have sort of a metal feel to it. Now a Lambert is going to be like a very bland texture, something like a rope that's not very reflective or cloth or any kind of non very reflective material like a carpet would even be a Lambert if it wasn't very reflective or shiny or what have you. I don't I don't know if this is the 80s, but a Lambert would be a very bland material and a fong is going to be like a plastic, you know, like a plastic bottle or any kind of plastic material that you have laying around uh, that would be a fong material is what you would use. I like to remember blin by its like bling. I don't know because it's kind of a similar sounding word. And Lambert, I don't know how to use that. Lambert is like loincloth. I don't know. that. I, you can use kind of name references to remember what they are. But again, blin is metal. Lambert is very plain dull and Fong is like a plastic. And those are the real main three that you're going to need to remember. So we do know that we need a metal for the sword portion, the blade. So let's go ahead and just click on Blin. So go ahead and select Blin and hit Control A on your keyboard if you haven't already. This will pull up your attribute editor. I kind of like to work with my hypershade and my attribute editor open at the same time. First thing I want to do is I want to change the name of this so I know exactly what it is. This is our blade material. So I'll just enter blade and press enter. Then I'm going to go ahead and create another material and it's also going to be a metal. It will be the hilt. So I'll just go ahead and create a, another blend and I'm going to select blend two and I'm going to come over here and call it the hilt. So I'll just type in hilt and I need another material yet again. And you can always, of course, minimize this if you want to kind of look at what you're doing over here at the same time. You can always minimize any window and it will go down here into the lower left hand corner. So I have the blade, I have the hilt material. So I know I need a handle and the handle will pretty much be what's on the inside of this rope twine. It's kind of this area here that our blade is going into this area here. So we'll just create another material. And I think I'm going to make that a Lambert. I don't want that to be very reflective. That's going to be kind of a duller texture and that'll help bring out the other metals that identify these are metal, you know, and this is going to be like a very bland texture. So go ahead and go back into the hypershade and let's go ahead and create a Lambert. Just select Lambert. And we got over here, that's our Lambert 4. We want to give it a name so we don't lose anything. So again, in the attribute editor, we'll go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this our handle. And we'll go ahead and create one more material. And we're going to use this for this 
intertwine this rope here. So let's see here. That would be another Lambert because it's not going to be very reflective. If you were going to do sort of a metal handle, you'd want to use a metal blend. I'm going to go with a Lambert because I think I'm going to make this look like a rope when I'm done. So Lambert 5, and I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to call this the rope. Or I could even be more specific and call it handle underscore rope. And that'll let me know what each of these materials are. So now that I have them created, I want to go ahead and start assigning these materials to this object. And again, all I've done is I've just created them. Then I went ahead and minimized the window. So I still have it available. I can open it back up. So if I wanted to assign it, you can also assign not just to an entire object. You can assign to specific faces of the object. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to right click and go to face and I'm going to press spacebar to go into my split view. If you were following from the previous video, it might not go into split view. You'd need to actually click on the four pane view to bring this up. Then you can kind of use your spacebar to move in and out of the windows. So that'll, if you were having that issue, that's how you fix that. So let's go ahead and select all the faces of the blade. I know if I just marquee select, that's all the faces of the blade. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to assign existing material because I've already created all the materials. How convenient is that, that they are already listed here. And I'm going to go ahead and select blade. Now you can see that that material was just assigned to the blade. And you can see it when I did it. I'll hit control Z so you can see it. If I hit control Y to redo it, you can see that that material is not being applied to anything but this portion that I have selected. So you can assign materials not just to an entire object, but to specific faces of an object. So just keep that in mind. It's a very handy tool to know or very handy thing to know. So I also want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and work with this area here. So I already have faces selected. I'm just going to go ahead and hold down shift and marquee select this top. And you'll notice it deselected that area there. So now I can zoom out and I can hold down shift again and just deselect these ones on top. So now I know that I've just gotten this area here, but I also got, if I press spacebar, the area on top of this handle. It's kind of a neat little trick there. You can kind of just be clever when you're making selections to save yourself time. So I'm press spacebar, come back into the front view, and I'll go ahead and hold down shift, and I'm just going to select all the ones on the bottom. And I, you'll notice it didn't select any of the rope twines, because again, the rope twines are a different object. They're actually a group of several different objects, which we'll deal with here in a bit. So now I have all this handled and I want to assign its material to it. So I'll go ahead and just right click. I'll come down to assign existing material and I'm going to go ahead and select the handle. Now let's say that your list of materials gets very long. I'll go ahead and hit control Z. Let's say your list of materials gets really long and you're having a hard time locating them or assigning them in that fashion, you know, using existing materials. Let's say you have like 50 new materials in this scene. One way you can also do it is you can open up your Hypershade editor. You can come over here, you can come over to handle, you can right click on it and you can sign material to selection. So you notice all I did was I opened my Hypershade material editor back up and I came over and I right clicked on handle with the faces selected and I went to assign material to selection and it just went ahead and assigned this material to this selection of faces. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's different ways you can do this. Now I need to go ahead and select all the hilt. Well, a clever way to make this selection without having to worry about selecting anything else is I can go ahead and select the rest of the blade. I'm just being clever here with my selection methods so I know that I'm selecting just the faces that I want. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm just going to select the rest of the blade. So now I know everything is selected except for the portion that I want to assign my material to. So again, selection is kind of like a toggle on, toggle off. So these are toggled on, these are toggled off, but I want it the other way around. So I'll hold down shift, marquee over everything and release. And you'll notice now it's swapped the selection from what was selected to what was not. So now that I have the hilt selected, I'll go ahead and I'll assign the hilt material. So I just right click, go down to assign existing material, and I'll go ahead and select the hilt. And you can see that it's been assigned. So I'll go to object mode so you can kind of see what we've done here. You can notice that the portion here is not very shiny at all as I kind of move around it. And you can see it if you're following along, you can see that there is a different 
definite difference in the specularity of the handle versus the hilt. And the hilt and the blade are going to be pretty much the same until we start making adjustments. So now we've assigned all of the materials, except now we need to assign the material to every one of our little objects here in our group. So what can we do here? Again, we can assign it by selecting individual faces, or we can assign it by selecting a group of items. So let's open up our outliner and I'm going to go ahead and just right click over here and find the perspective outliner and just click on that and again it'll assign it over here so you can easily access it in the future and I'm going to select the handle ropes and you'll notice everything that's in this just got selected and then I'm going to come over here and just hover over any one of them and just come down to assign existing material and I'm going to select handle rope and you'll notice no matter which one of these puppies I have selected I'm selecting different ones. You can see handle rope is assigned to every one of them. So you can assign a material to a group of items. Again, this was all of our different rope handles that we grouped together in a previous video. So now we have all of our materials assigned to this. In the next video, we're going to start taking a look at how we can make adjustments to materials. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.